Hello everyone. Welcome back. The purpose of this video is to kind of illustrate how to create an orthographic drawing of problem four that was recently created in a YouTube video as well as how to model. So the purpose of this video once again is to teach you how to create an orthographic drawing of your three-dimensional model in Onshape. And as you can see here we have problem four created and we're not going to go into the construction of the actual uh, model because that is in a previous video so please look for that in the playlist. So once again um, we're going to create this specific orthographic drawing and we need to make sure that your model is the same orientation as my model and if you look at the upper right hand corner when you right click and drag you can see that the orientation cube is uh, facing forward to the left that's the front view the right side is facing to the right um, and if you click the vertex corner you'll get your model to kind of look like mine now if your model if you click this and your cube is identical to mine but your model is somehow visually like this you created the wrong uh, geometry on the wrong plane in the previous video so you need to go back and kind of recreate recreate the model um, since this is a simple model, uh, it shouldn't take you too long to redo. So anyway, we're going to create a drawing of this, and the first thing we do when we do that is we click this little plus at the bottom left corner, and we're going to click Create Drawing. And when you do so, it's going to ask you what type of drawing template do you want to use. If this is the first time you're doing this, you're going to click the on shape um, icon at the top, and then you're going to select ANSI A inch, and the ANSI A inch template once selected and you click OK should present itself to you once it loads. Okay, and so what you see here is a, a blank title block. We have um, lettered rows and then we have numbered columns. So I could say A2 is the bottom left quadrant. I could say A1 is the bottom right quadrant. I could say B1 is the upper right quadrant and so forth. Um, so you're going to click on your part one. It's going to disappear when you do so. And then you're going to have a rectangle that represents the parent view, which we're going to start with the front. As you can see here, the front view is the parent view that we're going to click. It's just like a rubber stamp. When you click it, um, it'll place that there. You'll see a brown highlighted view. If you move your mouse above, you'll see that it gives you an outline and then the top view visual. Click and release. And now you are free, so you're going to click the front view and then you're going to move your mouse to the right of the front view and click and create the side view. You're going to repeat this except for you're going to go diagonal at this point. Click the front view, diagonally move and place. Don't worry about alignment at this point. You can press escape now to get out of projected view and you can drag your isometric view into a kind of like a comfortable corner because it's not really associated with the front top and side we are going to right click on the view that's isometric and then we're going to show shaded view which is three choices down from the right click menu it'll look just like you have in the part view and then we need to kind of ask ourselves is there any geometry hidden that we could normally see if we had x-ray vision which at this point we have missing geometry if we could see through it we would be able to see this line here which we can't unless we turn on hidden lines. So we're going to right click on it and say show hidden lines. And hidden lines once again are represented with a dotted line. No matter how much we zoom in you're going to get the same dot. And then the front view and the top view is showing everything that needs to be seen. So at this point we're going to dimension. We're going to use the baseline dimensioning technique and we're going to avoid dimensioning to the left areas of the left side of the title block, the bottom areas of the bottom part of the title block, because and the, also the top. We're going to avoid what I like to call the gutters. And we're going to cra uh, grab the dimension tool. If you press the letter D, that'll also do the same thing. And I'm going to choose to do the width dimensions in the front view. Then I'm going to do the height dimensions on the side view. And then I'm going to do the depth dimensions on the top view. Now I could do the opposite in a way where I could do the heights on the front, 
the widths on the top and the depths on the side. However, it will be easier read the way that I initially explained it. So we're going to do, once again, the widths on the front view by just clicking the D or the tool here and then the bottom horizontal line, click and release. Bring your mouse up, click and release to drop the 7. At this point, we are going to baseline dimension this. So we're going to go from the left baseline, click it, and ignore your number. You're going to move your mouse all the way to the right to the next measurable detail. Drop it. You're going to go back to the baseline, and then you're going to go to the next measurable detail. And as you can see, the three dimensions are sharing the baseline. You can press escape now, and I could zoom in a little bit and drag my two so it's centered just a little bit better. You want to have absolute perfection here and make this as readable as possible. Um, you're also putting your name on this and you want to put your best foot forward. So we've done your, your widths here. So we're going to do the heights here. We're going to do the baseline dimensioning technique as well. Um, there's obviously only going to be two dimensions here, but we're going to go from the bottom to the top inward and we're going to go bottom to the next step inward. Now we don't need to show the other measurement because we can subtract 2 from 4 to get the remaining value. We're now going to select the baseline dimensioning technique for the depth side which is the front of the part to the back of the part. This is looking down at it. So we're going to click the front nose to the back and then we're going to shoot out the dimension to the right. And then we're going to go, same scenario, we're going to use the baseline, I guess, at the bottom at this point, and then to the middle to drop that down here as well. You can zoom in to um, press escape. You can zoom in to kind of center and align your, your numbers so that they look as presentable as possible. The spacing between them is pretty good. And so at this point, um, we've satisfied all the geometry that needs to be dimensioned and then we're gonna now put our name on this so if you zoom in I have a couple extra text box here I like to click them and press delete we don't need three rows of text for the title we're going to now click the A or the letter N for note we're then going to click and drop that down and now you're given a text box we're gonna put our caps lock on and type problem 4 and then you're gonna take your mouse and stretch this text box with the arrows that you see here and we're going to change the height of the text to a physical quarter of an inch. It didn't get any bigger so I'm going to highlight the existing text and type 0.25. I could have also created the number before I wrote the letters. It would have probably been easier. So stretch this as it got bigger, click the green check, press escape, and at this point you can drag this so that it's kind of positioned in the center, it looks presentable, zoom out, and you'll notice your name is already there um, because when you created the Onshape account, the name that you registered hopefully was accurate, um, it'll put that there and the date. If you need to change it, just double click it and you can change it. But one of the nice features of Onshape is it'll automatically put your name on it. Also, um, this is third angle projection, we've talked about this. Remember we are showing the right hand side of this part on the right view and this tapered cone kind of lets you understand that right this is the, the looking straight at it the front and then this is the right side okay so this specific drawing is complete at this point you're going to turn this in how we turn this in is you're going to click the three little bars here scroll down to print there will probably be a pop-up blocker at this point if you're using chrome for the first time so what you're going to do is it'll say a pop-up has been blocked over here, there'll be a little red square onto a pop-up window. You want to click it and then say allow for Onshape all always, and then you will get this print dialog box, which is PDF. You're then going to click the download. And at this point, you're going to type in problem four. And then save it in a location of which you can now upload it to the Google Classroom. Specifically for this assignment, um, unless I say otherwise, and this is another year, but for this year, in the October 20th, 2020, my classes are going to submit Problem 4 PDF and Problem 6 PDF into the Google Classroom as one assignment that's already posted for you. 
And at this point, I've shown you how to do problem four. You're on your own to do problem six. And once again, you're going to try to make this as readable as possible. You're going to avoid dimensioning in the gutters. You're going to avoid overlapping dimensions. You're going to use the baseline dimensioning technique. And then you're going to use uppercase letters for your text that you put on your drawing. Also, you want to make sure you turn hidden lines on and you want to right click and shade. So with that being said, hope you um, were able to follow along and this was clear enough. And I look forward to seeing your problem six, seeing you think for yourself. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.